A lot of Pokemon fans are feeling very sheepish today. It's Fragments of Silicon. And welcome to um, this not so special um, pre E3 edition of Fragments of Silicon. I, um, we're just a few days out, and you know we're looking forward to it slash dreading it as we do every year. More on that later. Anyway, um, joining me as always is the regular crew, including sort of surprisingly Petty Fan. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, why don't you go first, since you've got some explaining to do. Alright, so yeah, the rumors of my demise are mostly exaggerated. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had the surgery on Tuesday, but it seems there were some complications. Because when my doctor went into my knee... It looked like it was snow in there. That's how bad my cartilage was ripped up. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently there was also some pretty significant damage to my kneecap. It was basically delaminating, if anybody knows what that means. No. Mm. Basically, it means the layer... things that are flat together or that are, like, supposed to be in flat layers are stopping being flat in layers. Yeah, it's basically my knee was flaking apart. Yikes. Yeah, so a lot of this current surgery was um, cleaning up the cartilage and then just kind of shaving off bone till we had an anchor point to put in new um, cartilage plugs. And um, Basically, this next surgery is trying to do what they can to save my knee so I don't need a knee replacement at 27. So, that's fun. And the reason why there hasn't been any Final Fantasy fourteen or any of my other stuff on the channel is because I'm on bed rest for at least the next few weeks because of how much bone they had to take out from my kneecap. If I try and sit up too long, I run the risk of potentially snapping my kneecap. Uh, so yeah, we don't we don't want that. Yeah. So yeah, I had go back in for surgery on the twenty fifth, and hopefully they have big enough um cartilage plugs this time to hopefully slow some of this damage. And I don't need a knee replacement. But yeah, until then, I'm kind of stuck with just my phone and my PS4, so... Bit unfortunate, because if I would have known I was going to need to be on bed rest, I would have looked into getting my computer down here. But, yeah, since this was kind of a spur-of-the-moment thing, this is kind of what happens. Hmm. But, yeah, I see the doctor on the 12th for my follow-up for this surgery. So hopefully I can see about at least going up to my computer for, like, a week or two till my next procedure. But that really depends on what condition my knee is in. So kind of unfortunate, but... And eh, ends of the breaks guess next person yeah. uh -huh. alright uh, Twilight why don't you go alright well that is probably already known by now I'm the one who's doing the streaming of, uh, for the time being until Petty Fan recovers um, and I was nervous 
for the um, um, Sunday uh, streams, but yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> less so now since everything went fine. Um, in other news, well, sometime probably by the end of this month, I think, or sometime around the beginning of July, I will be moving. Uh, uh, find a house? It's an, It's more of an apartment, actually, not a house. Not a house? So it's, yeah, it's kind of like an outhouse, sort of. Um, it'll be somewhere in town. Um, it, the same people uh, who uh, directed me to that first house um, um, are the ones who uh, told me about it. Um, thankfully, this one does not have any mold in it anywhere from what we've seen. From what we've seen, that's concerning. <laughs> I've went and looked at it, and I have a pretty good inspection of it. I have not seen black mold anywhere, so... <laughs> and it's in pretty that's good, good. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's in pretty good shape, too. So, just had to get cleaned up. Um, most of that is done, and... Um, just gotta get furniture moved in there. We got some furniture um, that my um, late aunt left behind and um, I found some place for it so I'm going to make use of it myself um, thankfully um, from after, after that I have to get uh, electric and water and, and internet and whatnot um, set up there and and I'll be good to move in. Um, I'm not sure when exactly. Uh, I'll make sure it's during a time where nothing here gets interrupted. Uh, and uh, if I can be helped, Gogs will, is of course, on standby for that. And I at least kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't have any confidence in you. <laughs> well, it's more... It's more that... Well, we yeah, no. we cracked your sound problems, so... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of me that's the biggest concern now. Because, um, spoiler alert, I'm probably going to have to do some of the e E3 streams. Yeah, most likely. Because Sorry, I, I can't take all of E3 off. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, Monday is, the like, um, in terms of volume, the big day. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, Indeed. So yeah, once I get moved in, I won't have to worry about any more mudslides and all those other concerns like the hill and whatnot. And I'll be about a 10-minute drive away from work. All right. Uh, and that's about it for me. All right. Um, well, Dolly, it's your go. Uh, work's been pretty stressful the last couple of weeks because one of the people who, I forget if I mentioned this last week, one of the people who does the payroll stuff that I help out with uh, left fairly suddenly, so other people are having to do it and they don't know as well how to do some of the parts of it because we use a kind of complicated and cobbled together system that probably uh, was built together over time and make, only makes sense in that context. Um, so, at the same time, there's been a lot more for me to do, but also, sometimes I have a hard time finding the right thing to do because there's stuff that I don't know how to do that really needs to be done. So, that's been kind of frustrating. Um, the weather has been okay, a little bit rainy, but, you know, warm. Yes. Um, for video games, uh, I've actually been playing a good chunk of Dead Cells again since they had a large expansion that came out, and, uh, I've been having some fun with that, um, and I'm preparing to play the game for this weekend, so, um, um and I'm looking forward to the next Splatfest, which is, I think, in a couple weeks. Apparently it's Team Unicorn versus Team Narwhal, and I need to see what the arguments are before I can decide on that. 
Team Unicorn just for that stupid Narwhal song. I will take that into consideration. <laughs> and if and if uh if if if, if that gets referenced, that will de in the arguments that will definitely be a uh, ding. Mm. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, that's about all I got. Okay, it's my go. Well, I'm like my you know the past not just the um week week and a half mainly making sure this show got a smooth transition from you know the, you know the, the the all the streaming stuff you know uh we did a, a whole bunch of testing you know some good progress you know and such now we'll see how e3 goes like um, yeah. Because, once again, um, I myself having to bear the brunt of streaming it is concerning because we, uh, we're having some sound issues. Like, hopefully those can get ironed out before, um, you know, the proceedings. But yeah, it's also been a lot of E3 prep this week. Um,. Going over schedules, and um, also worth noting, uh, both Kevin and Ogre will be joining us on the E3 broadcasts. Um, their schedules pending, um, but you know they will be in attendance. So mm -hmm. it will be, I guess the you know the full crew outside of Mac, who. I don't know. He's just kind of disappeared. Yeah, he, we know he's still alive because he's posting on Facebook, but... Yeah, and he posted a video on the, on his uh, YouTube page not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, and he posted some stuff on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, he's... Yeah. Like, um... Anyway. P point is, we know he's around, he's just not chimed in in months. So... Yeah, uh, other, uh, since the talk to fuck up, I don't think. No, uh, he, he, sh he chimed in randomly one week, uh, like one Tuesday, but, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, he, he's he's just kind of busy with his myriad of projects, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm sure he'll show up, you know, I, I, you know, just one day he'll just show up like nothing happened. That's happened before. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, that being said, we'll be going over E3 scheduling at the bottom of the show. Um, outside of that, uh, I purchased some new speakers uh, because my old ones were getting crackly. Which, um, which means one of them blew out. That's fun. Yeah, it wasn't too big of a replacement. Uh, you know, it's just these new speakers, they have blue LEDs on them. Oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, got night lights here, basically. <laughs> like, but then again, so does my, you know, they're the exact sh same shade as uh, my new cable modem. Like, <laughs> you know. Maybe they can be friends. <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> No. Also worth noting, I know what I'm getting for my birthday that's coming up um, in a couple of months. A new microphone. A professional <laughs> microphone. Oh. Nice. Yes. I'm like, you know, kind of need, you know, kind of want something more beyond um, what I got now. So I'm looking forward to that. So and now you're fan even better. <laughs> like, well, uh, hopefully not. Professional grade microphones are usually better. Well, if you set them out right, are you? And depends on what kind, but they can be significantly better at yeah, blocking off the not the exact sound you want. Yeah. Uh, like anyway, um, that's all the news that's fit to print this week. So merrily we shall roll along to the interview portion of the broadcast. And joining us this week is our good friend John of Manga Gamer. Hello, welcome back. It's good yep. to be back here. 
Indeed. A bit longer than usual, mainly because uh, last... You yeah, know, lots that, of things to take care of that came up last minute last month. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, everything has been settled and you're here now, so... Mm-hmm. You know. um, let's see, where to start? Where to start? Uh, let's see. Um, I guess we should start with tr- um, Trinoline. Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah, Trinoline. Yeah. Um, because I think that's something we wanted to cover last time, but uh, we didn't get a chance to. So. Yeah, um, Trinoline was the title. Uh, we just released it uh, April 18th, so it's it's currently available on our website and Steam. Yeah. Uh, it's a sci-fi story created by the developers Minori. Uh, some fans may be familiar with them from uh, F, the fairy tale of the two, or uh, the title that's on Steam, Eden, and then there were only two on the planet, I think is the full subtitle. Mm-hmm. Um, so they do, the developer has a strong focus on uh you know, strong moving storylines. When you look at each of their games, you can tell they put a lot of wow. emphasis and detail into the the presentation and the styling. They definitely they definitely put a lot of effort and attention to the the pacing and how things are portrayed on the screen to sort of maintain more of that movie feel as you play through the games. Mm-hmm. And so with Trinoline, uh, Trinoline is a game that they developed after the success of Eden here in the West. Uh, it was They first announced Trinoline at Anime Expo over in California. Um, and the game is uh, centered around... Uh, a main character, his childhood friend, and essentially the android that she creates. Um, the story starts off when the main character, Shun, uh, his sister, Shirene, drowns while he's still a child, and he never really quite gets over that trauma. It's hard to get over you know, losing your sister at a young age, and his t- childhood friend is just as affected by this, and so she, uh, the character Sarah, eventually becomes a renowned scientist and creates a new type of android system, uh, which is called the Trino. That's where the, the Trino line comes from in the title. It's the line of Trino androids. And the what's unique about this line is that they are as sentient and intellectually capable as human beings and of course because of everything that happened to them the first one she makes is modeled after the little sister that died and she it's through this this android that she has created which carries some of the memories of his deceased sister that he reunites with her and the story develops more fully from there and it explores a lot of different themes uh, about like what does it mean to be human what does it mean to be android you know what is love can there be love between the two is it just destined for heartbreak and it explores that from the perspectives of both the human shun and the android Shirene herself, um, as she also has to deal with sort of quandaries like the fact that as long as she's maintained, she will outlive all of them. And so it's a lot of existential questions like there that she goes through with as she herself falls in love with him. And there's, of course, the questions and the themes of, you know, given that she does have the mem- some of the memories of his sister before she died, how much of her is his sister and how much of her is herself as a, well, person, android, however you want to refer to her. Indeed. Like, that's 
That's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a really heartbreaking story. And that is one thing that Minori as a developer does really well, is those kind of emotionally moving stories. Right. I'm trying to think if we've played one of their titles before. Like, I don't think so, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, I know they, they also did Supipara, which I think you oh, might have tried. Yeah, ah. yeah there we go. Yeah, yeah Supipara was the one game they never quite got to yeah. finish. So the, they only managed to make the first two chapters of what was intended to be five. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Um, like, yeah, we, we definitely played those. Like, yeah. Um, we, in fact, we featured them on the show. Uh, yeah, and so if you've played, yeah, Supipara, you can already see there's a lot of hints at more than just, you know, the happy-go-lucky that it kind of portrays itself at first glance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, in terms of the actual visual novel, what kind of novel is this? Is it a kinetic one? Is it, um, you know, is it choice-based? It is. Uh, it's, it's more of your standard visual novel. There are several choices you make throughout the game. There, it has a few different routes. Uh, there's the route uh, that focuses on the android Shirane. There's a route that focuses on the, the childhood friend that created her, Sarah. Uh, and there's another character that gets involved as well, uh, Yuri, who also has a uh, route of her own. Hmm. And... I'm assuming there's also a true final ending. As there usually are with these kinds of visual novels. There's at least one that's probably more canon than the others, but yeah. Hang on. Uh, uh, getting a bit of feedback. Yeah. Petty, is that you? Shouldn't be. My headset should be muted. Well, it, it seems to be over with now. Uh, anyway, um, let me see here. Uh, now, do you have to... Um, is there a romance system, for lack of a better term? You know, it's like, um, you know, do the choices that you make affect just, like, the route, or affects the affection level of the girl in question? Uh, it's not... Yeah, it's not really so much, like, you build an affection level mm -hmm. to end up on a route, but the choices you make, obviously, do end up leaning more towards one or the other over the course of the game, and that's... Then the roots diverge with focus on that character. So... Makes sense. Like... And um, what are we talking about in terms of uh, production values? Like, is this a fully voiced uh, visual novel? Yes, absolutely. Like, uh, I'm assuming that, except for the main character. Uh, yeah, the main character is the only one who doesn't is not voiced in Trina Line. Yeah, uh, it, it's like, honestly, it's more amazing if a main character does get voiced. <laughs> yeah, that's that's more of the exception to the rule. <laughs> right, right. Uh, anyway, so uh, I note on the Steam page here uh, that the version on that service is the all ages version. Um, Correct, and there's a free adult patch available on our website for those who want to add the adult content back into the Steam version. And I suppose it. Uh, we should ask exactly what was cut from the Steam version. Uh, adult scenes. The character is having sex. Sex okay. and sex and sex. <laughs> yeah. So, it, well, it's like, you know, with Steam... Is it anything, like, significantly plot-affecting? Although, also, yeah, Steam can censor some other things sometimes randomly. Y yeah, I'm sure we'll get into that a little later <laughs> in the show today. But, uh... No, it's mostly, I mean, it's the, not, like I said, it's it's only the, it affects the plot in the sense of the sex is there as like a culmination and part of the relationships that build between the characters, mm -hmm. but the story can still be enjoyed with the fake to black. Okay, so it, it's a bit more superfluous than other 
titles, but less superfluous than others. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I wouldn't say it was it would be gratuitous. Right. So, yeah. I, there are different levels of these things. And uh, how long will it take someone to get through to read the line here? Um, I would say it's maybe about 30 hours, because I know it's a little longer than Eden, but there are uh, visual novels that are longer than it. Right. It's like, you know, uh, I played longer, I played shorter. Yeah. I don't think I've ever finished a visual novel that was 30 hours, but, you know, I've played mm-hmm. them. Like, well, you can finish a route. <laughs> that's more, you know, we, yeah. for review th- uh, purposes. Like, mm-hmm. Anyway, um, let me see. I'll see if my colleagues here have any questions about the... Uh, Trinoline. Nothing immediately comes to mind. It looks interesting. Uh, anything special about the music in this one? Uh, I mean, it's good. It's all developed by Minori themselves. So there's. I, I don't think there's any specifically notable artists, unless you're already like familiar with the studio. Fair enough. I don't have any uh, immediate questions myself. Yeah, same with me. Okay. Um, I guess my last question on this one is um, what about VAs? Any notable VAs for this title? Oh yeah, that was actually my my other question. Is uh, dual audio or only one? Uh, it's the Japanese voice actress, actress actresses. So, um, and I'm trying to, because a lot of them uh, went by there. I think a few of them have, uh, uh, there's definitely ones that have done lots of other roles, um, but they, the ones for this game used their uh, adult game aliases, so it's a little harder to track down exactly what other titles they've been involved with. Uh, I know at least... One of them, uh, voice games from a kids for the pedal series. Um, one. Uh. So yeah, they've yeah they've been uh, one is in a vehicle two. So there's yeah. Yeah, a lot of the there are definitely talented voice actresses. It's not like they're new uh, to the industry. Okay. Um, right. So, shifting forward, uh, well, I'm I'm not sure how much you want to address a piece of evil here. I, no. uh, so, Piece of Evil is a game uh, made by the English developers uh, Tame Akaguya. Uh, they released uh, his Chuni P.O. Cannot Be Cured uh, with us on our website and on Steam as well. Uh, it is a game. It is available. Uh, if you would like to support, you know, indie artists and that are trying to, you know, sort of get it, still getting off the ground a little bit. Okay. Like, uh, moving forward, um, right, uh, so the title you really wanted to talk about uh, today was the expression, uh, forgive me if I mispronounce this, uh, Armor, Armoretto? Amrilato. Amrilato. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, the, uh, the word itself, Amrilato, uh, is, is actually a li- an Esperanto word. Uh, and if uh, my... that explains why it sounds vaguely European, but not specific at all. Yes. Because so Rondo believe... was designed specifically for that purpose. Anyway. Yeah, and if I believe uh, the word itself, Amrilato itself, uh, what it means 
is essentially uh, something along the lines of like love, romance, relationships. So as you can kind of tell, the one of the theme, one of the very strong themes about uh, the expression Amri Lato is learning to understand and connect with others. Um, so for those who have not uh, heard of the expression Amri Lato already, this is actually, it's a very special uh, visual novel in the sense of the unique linguistic challenge that localizing it provides. Because the this is a game that makes very strong and intimate use of the actual real-world language Esperanto. Uh, the, the premise of the expression Amri Lato is that uh, the main character, Rin, uh, finds herself whisked away to another world. It's a story that you know fans of anime and manga are probably pretty familiar in one form or another, um, but what makes this one very unique is that she doesn't have any inherent ability to understand the language of the world that she has dropped into. And so the she finds herself in this completely different, completely new world that speaks a language she has no understanding of. And uh, as well as, as she's lost, she encounters uh, another young girl named Ruka, and the two of them uh, become friends. And since Ruka is able to speak sort of a little bit of broken Japanese, she begins working with Rin to help her adjust to this world, to help her understand the world, uh, to help her to communicate with the people in the world. And, you know, ultimately Rin still wants to go home, but the story also follows the relationship that develops between the two as they learn to communicate. And so... What, is also, what has been such uh, an amazing challenge and a thrill to work on with this title is the fact that be, with the language of this other world being Esperanto and with the characters teaching the main character Esperanto, there are a lot of elements to the title that coincide with this. For example, when the... Uh, characters in this world speak at like when Rin first appears in the world you don't understand what they're saying at all it's their words are written on the screen in their language and you don't understand it eventually as you start learning the like pronunciations of some of the worlds the the text that displays in the box will also change to reflect like which letters you started to understand as like this corresponds to these syllables and you can start piecing together what the words are supposed to be and as you actually learn uh, what words are and learn what they mean they become translated in the text box so you can now see instead of say you know instead of the Esperanto world you'll be able to see the English word and the Esperanto will be available sort of above or below it in the text box as well. And throughout the game, there are several, like, actual lessons and drills to that, you know, like flashcards and things like that to help both Rin and the player legitimately learn Esperanto. Uh, when the developers of this game, uh, the developers are... Uh, they actually worked with the uh, national authority on inner on Esperanto in Japan to you know double check and make sure all of the Esperanto in the game is authentic and accurate. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Galax, I'm going to let you uh, handle this since, you know, this is kind of area. <laughs> okay. Uh, for those who don't know anything about Esperanto, it, it's a constructed language that's basically designed to be an easy-ish second language to learn for anyone who speaks pretty much any European language, especially Romance or Germanic. So that's actually a pretty good choice for this because if you, if the per person playing it, it's very unlikely that the player will probably already speak Esperanto, although it'll be interesting if they do, but if you speak French or German or Spanish, you'll probably be able to get a couple words that just kind of remind you of something, so you might be start being able to get the gist of it. So, that is a, I think, an interesting and good choice for that. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I mean, what other constructed language could they have used? Uh, there are other constructed languages. I know, but they, they tend to be, you know, part of a franchise. You know, like Plink. Elvish. There are a few others that are just conlangs for the sake of conlangs, or to the same goal of Esperanto, that is to make uh, international communication easier. Though, I, I'm guessing that they're not at nearly as prevalent, because... You know, yeah, Esperanto has has the best PR, I think, and is well, I mean, the, be like, the best uh, uptake. How do I put this? You know, uh, there is a movie completely done in Esperanto. You know, I don't think there's another constructed language that has that, you know, th where that constructed language didn't originate from. Mm -hmm. So, it makes sense that that would have been chosen. Mm -hmm. um, but, I suppose my next question is, like, th did you work on the translation of this title? Uh, I did not have the opportunity to work on this uh, personally. The we had uh, the translator that worked on this title. Uh, it was actually the same uh, translator and programmer that worked on the Kiss for the Pedal series for us. That uh, did the translation and the programming for this uh, particular title. And the programming was also another challenge too. That uh, hopefully when our programmer has some more time, uh, he can write a piece about for the blog because there was a lot of work that had to be done with the engine to, in order to maintain the ability to retain that change in display of characters and display of like phonetics and meaning above and below different words as it transitioned from Japanese language and Japanese engine into English. Yeah, I, I, that sounds like it, it, it would be quite the undertaking. Yeah, just like this, this is translation deluxe here, since you know, yeah. you're dealing with you know your usual Japanese to English transliteration, but now you've also got you know the, the Esperanto stuff on top of it. Yes, and we will we'll be releasing this uh, obviously in English. We will also uh, be having the original Japanese available. And while this will not be available at launch, there are plans for this to be released in Chinese as well. Huh. I, I suppose my next question is just how well does Esperanto translate into Japanese? Since, you know, that is a completely, you know, different language type than, you know, what Esperanto is based on. Um, I mean, it's... I would say it's probably a challenge, but it's still, again, the point is Esperanto is meant to be easier to learn. It was designed with the hopes of becoming an international language, so it's still going to be easier for Japanese speakers to learn than, say, English with all of our a horrible and atrocious exceptions and rule breaking to every rule that exists for the language. Yeah, even if, even if it's not uh, at a, like linguistically related directly to Japanese, as a constructed language for the purpose, it's still less ambiguous and more regular than most actual languages. They'll be getting some feedback here. 
Anyway, um, now is there any voice in the game? Uh, yes, yes. The I mean, it's fully voiced. It's what now? It's fully voiced. Oh, so there's so there's somebody speaking in Esperanto as well. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if it's Esperanto with a Japanese accent. Hmm. <laughs> well, that 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 may be an issue. <laughs> that, uh, I mean, this is just really fascinating from a mm -hmm. mechanic standpoint. It is. Yes, like, like I said, it is it is a wonder in terms of the linguistic challenge and the localization challenge. We are really proud to be able to work on this and be able to bring this to the West. Now, uh, how long uh, have you been working on uh, translating this? Um, we started translation on this... Um, trying to remember exactly how many months ago. It was... Back before... Um, I'm actually trying to check my some of my records here to find out for you, because it's been a while. Ah, uh, my research! <laughs> like, hey, it's nice when it's not me who has to fumble around for notes. <laughs> like, uh, uh, You started work back in um, not August. Uh, looks about was say. May of last year. Okay. I, I, so, a year ago. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like typical um, amount of translation. Yeah. It's actually kind of surprising given all the challenges involved. Yeah, we had we did several we did a couple of different uh, passes over the translation on this to make sure uh, everything was right. During beta testing, we actually uh, were able to find uh, a couple of people familiar with uh, Esperanto to go over it with a focus on that as well uh, to make sure we didn't mess anything up during the translation. Uh, as we were trying to, you know, because we want people to be able to, we wanted to make sure people can still learn Esperanto and not come away with any misunderstandings. Or, That's, you know, misconceptions. That is understandable, since, well, Esperanto isn't that widely known. You know, it's like the most successful constructed language out there. I, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just, that's a really low bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, anyway, um, so, I suppose we have to address this at some point, but... Um, this game is having some Steam issues. Uh, yes. So we are currently, uh, hoping to be able to publish this on Steam. Um, but Steam so far has come back and told us that they want it censored. For basically no good reason. Well... It, it, there is a reason, though. Like, the... so, yeah. So the game, because the game does focus on, does involve the growing relationship between the two girls, and the the girls are uh, Rin is seventeen, Ruka is fourteen, and in the game there is one scene where they're in the bath. And so Steam is slanderously claiming that this 
is sexualizing minors. I mean... Never I... mind that millions of people just recently watched 15-year-old Arya Stark fuck a guy on HBO. Mm-hmm. I'm like... Uh, I, I don't know how to address this since, you know, I, it, it probably it proves, seems... it goes back to the point and it goes, it all really goes to prove that the people in charge of reviewing games to determine if they can go on Steam or not are not doing a proper job. They're not actually reviewing the content and they are just being discriminatory towards anime characters. I'm like... There's I... plenty of other companies and other titles yeah. that are facing, quite honestly, similar issues from Steam because r- right now, Steam is just assuming, oh, anime artwork, porn. And they're not taking any time to second guess that assumption uh, i'm like uh once again they're certainly they're certainly grading yeah. it more harshly than they are grading other things that are just as obscene right and nothing in the expression Am- amrilato is obscene oh, let's no, yeah. make sure that's yeah. clear yeah 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 but even the stuff that actually is obscene it gets like uh, would be okay if it was like a badly made poser game instead. Like, uh, you know, it's like I, I can't speak for Steam's positions because, you know, only Steam knows those. Well, even Steam doesn't know those because the decisions are up to each individual that reviews the game that day. I'm like, you yeah, know, that sounds like uh, approvals processing. No. I'm like, um, you know, I, like, I don't know if something else happened on their end to make this happen or what, but, you know, I it, don't, it, 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 goes, is, it does go against everything that they said when they talked about opening Steam up and allowing, you know, any game that's not illegal to be on the platform. It's, it's a clear violation of that philosophy that they tried to espouse. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, like I, I'm not sure if Sony ha- has a, a hand in this because you know, uh, you're called like Sony has instituted a crackdown, uh, you know, over like overt sexualization of underage characters and you know people are taking page out of that. You know, like I said, we could speculate all day as to why Steam is doing this, but yeah. you know the. More the bigger point is they are doing this, and um, I suppose the question, um, in regards to you know the capaciousness of this of their stance aside, is um, in censoring this scene, would anything be lost? Um, I would, I mean, yeah, there, so there's. There's not, like I said, it's not, there's nothing obscene, but, you know, part of, you know, one of the key elements of, like, the scene in the bath is the two characters, you know, starting to notice each other more in that romantic sense, like, you might, like, normally if you, like, if two friends walk into each other in the bath, at least in Japan, it's, you like, nothing. You don't think anything about it. It's not an issue. It's not a problem. And so sort of the importance of this scene is the fact that they are being a little more aware of each other and a little embarrassed about seeing each other and that sort of recognition that, oh, there are feelings between us that are growing here. I get, I get what you're saying. Like, um, you know, this is the deepening of attractions and so, so on and so forth. Yeah. 
it's like, yeah, that sounds important. I'm like, um, you know. Well, especially considering the game is all about the, you know, building connections, communications, and that, you know, growth of, you know, the growth and strengthening of bonds between people and, you know, being able to share your thoughts and ideas and feelings with each other. Because obviously that's a core issue at the heart of the game is, you know, when Rin starts out the game, she cannot communicate anything. She cannot share any of her thoughts or feelings or desires, emotions with anyone in this world. And it, the entire, you know, throughout the course of the game, it is that struggle and that is a lot of what drives her you know to really learn the language is to be able to communicate and to express herself mm. yeah that sounds important like so you know good luck to you yeah well we're also since steam is Deciding to be a little crazy, we are also uh, currently uh, making efforts to try and get this game released on GOG and potentially even Discord as well. Hmm. I, uh, well, I mean, that might help with the effort. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, um, I'm curious as to how working with Discord store is, because that's... Uh... It's, it's all very new. It's all very new. There's a lot of... It's At the moment, it's definitely a learning process. Mm-hmm. I'd imagine so. Like, I don't think we've ever talked to some, uh, anyone who's worked on the Discord um, Nitro. I, or the Discord Store. Whatever they're calling it this week. Like, mm. um, but... Uh, and I suppose along those lines, uh, any luck with the Epic Game Store? Uh, we have not uh, approached or started working with them yet. Now, I probably just as well, since from what I've heard, th- you know, they would be stingier than Steam by a large margin. Yeah, because if I'm not. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't they... They're involved with the Fortnite, aren't they? Yeah. So their mm-hmm. audience tends to be a bit younger. Well, it's more um, comments made by Tim Sweeney stating that they wouldn't allow things like junk games or porn games on their service. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can definitely see them having their perception on visual novels now. Um, but, you know, I don't know for sure. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying this is what, uh, you know, this is what the head of Epic has said about, yeah. you know, th- th- you know, they're going for, you know, ultra high curation or whatever. And, you know, the unfortunate side effect of that is a lot of games get left on the uh, wayside. Like, yeah. It's right a, it's a, it's a policy, yeah. Yeah, you know. but anyway, anyway, um, right. So we are getting low on time here. So very quick, what else are you working on uh, upcoming for Manga Gamer? Uh, I have moved on to a project that's still uh, not going to be announced until Otakon. Okay. Uh, so I'll be able to talk more about the project I'm actively working on after that. Uh, but we are we are going to be at Anime Expo. Uh, we will also actually have the artist from the Fun Bank Fantasy series with us there uh, to sign autographs and you know do sketches, things like that. Uh, so if anyone's going to be out in the Los Angeles area during July Fourth weekend, uh, we hope they'll come out and visit us at our booth there at Anime Expo. Uh, we're going to be announcing several new titles there. Uh, we'll also be announcing more new titles at Otakon in the end of July. Uh, we recently announced uh, the third edition of Emoto Paradise, Emoto Paradise 3. Uh, we've also announced uh, 
some cat girl focused games from uh, Skyfish Poco. Uh, we announced those last April at Anime Boston. Uh, Wan Yan a la mode and Yan Cafe Macchiato are the two titles there. And we will be, and for fans of Higurashi and Umineko, uh, we're also working with Seventh Expansion to see the uh, latest edition of the When They Cry fan tries, uh, Kikonia When They Cry. Uh, to be released on our website in Steam that is currently set to release in Japan uh, this summer at Comicat, and it is uh, our intention to have a simultaneous release on that one. Neat. Like, all right then. Um, well, John, it, um, it was uh, wonderful having you back on the program. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Let's see. Our, uh, I'd like to invite you back um, August 7th. Can you do that? Uh, I believe so. Okay. All right. Um, well, until then, um, take care. Take care. Yeah. All right. Um, so um, the games are Trinoline all, uh, and um, the expression Armalanto. Uh, you can pick Trinoline up on Manga Gamer and Steam. And the expression Armalanta is currently um, available for pre-order on uh, Manga Gamer. It comes out June 13th, 2019. That's next week. Yes. And um, Petty Fan, play us to the next segment. Or, sorry, Twilight, Twilight. <laughs> sorry. Force of habit there, folks. Petty Fan, try to play us to the next segment. Twilight, actually do it. <laughs> Right. Um, welcome to the topic of discussion. Uh, this week, we are talking about uh, Sonic Racing. Not just Team Sonic Racing or Sonic Team Racing. Uh, seriously, I do get that as mixed up. Yeah, because that was, that was a great marketing idea, guys. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help oh. that, you know... Well, no, it's Team Sonic Racing. It's Crash Team Racing. Well, more to the point, you know, it's Sonic Team. Oh, yeah. Uh, the the game-making team. Yes. So, you know, that's not confusing at all. But, um, you know... Action, that's the word. Yeah. But, you know, we're not just talking about the latest Sonic Racing uh, game. We're talking about the entire um, Sonic Racing franchise. Or franchises, as it were. Because, you know, so um, Sonic has actually had quite a number of racing franchises. And it's safe to yep. say you know, it's actually safe to say franchises because um, the only one that only went to one game was Sonic R. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I suppose you know, if you want to see uh, Sonic Team Racing as separate from the All-Star games, um, but it's like, it's made by Sumo Digital. It's, you know, it's in line with the other modern day cart racing. But that's still a yet, anyway. Right. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, Sonic can trace his racing lineage all the way back to, of all things, the Game Gear, um, where he starred in the Sonic Drift series, um, which was Sega's answer to Mario Kart. I mean, it's if you've ever played uh, one of the Sonic Drift games... It's very Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. you know, just lesser because Game Gear. You know, it, it, it's an 8-bit system. Yeah, it's basically what would have happened if they would have tried to port Mario Kart to the original um, NES. Something like that. I'm like, um, you know, and the games were okay for what they were back in the day. But uh, they are—they are not really worth visiting. Um, I, I, not even like today, but you know, back when they started appearing on the compilations, you know, mm -hmm. which is honestly where I played them. Uh, right. Because 
I did not have a Game Gear. I, kn- I knew a few kids who had a Game Gear, and you know, they nobody had Sonic Drift. Yeah, if I recall, the Game Gear didn't take off very well in the U.S. So it did okay. It did okay, but you know, it it wasn't the Mega Smash hit that was the Game Boy. But mm-hmm. you know, and keep in mind, we only got one of the Sonic Drift series, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. I believe 2 is Japanese exclusive. Uh, other way around, uh, I think. Like, Sonic Drift 1 came out only... Oh, uh, right, yeah, and they just filed the 2 off for the U.S. Right, y- you know, that's what they did back in the day. Like, you know, numbers? Who needs them? Do we need to go into Final Fantasy discussion? <laughs> no. Num- numbers no. are only important for people to be able to keep track of which one they need to buy next. Yeah. Like, and, you know, that being said, I can see why they only, you know, why, you know, given the choice, they went with Sonic Drift 2 because, you know, Sonic Drift 2 is the better game. Or at least, you know, the more full game. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, to give you an idea of how, um, how little there was in the original Sonic Drift, there are four characters. Like, and this is also, you know, Sonic Drift also came out, you know, really early in the uh, Sonic lifespan. Um, Because, you know, it's Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Tails, Dr. Robotnik, and this is actually where Amy Rose made her playable debut. Now, there's some trivia you can add to your mind. But yeah, Amy Rose was first playable in Sonic Drift. Yep. And for those wondering, this came out in 94, so... Yep. Yep. So, yeah, it's post-Sonic CD, post-Sonic 2, but pre-Sonic 3. Which Mm -hmm. is, you know, why you've got Amy Rose showing up, but not, let's say, Knuckles the Echidna. You know, because... You know, Sonic's... Um, character roster wasn't very deep at this point. Yeah, it, it wasn't the help that it is today. <laughs> I mean, you know, just <laughs> advancing to Sonic Drift 2, um, they added, you know, there are three new characters. You know, they, um, Knuckles, Fang the Sniper, slash Knack the Weasel. No, I don't know why they, why they did that. Okay. Sniper no. was probably considered to be I mean, I don't know why they changed Fang to Knack, but Sniper is technically possibly a little more violent than they like in their furry mammal-based platforming slash kart racing games. I guess, but, you know, it's like, it's not even an animal name thing. Like, well, on the other hand, he's also only half weasel, so... Like, but Which means he was designed as a wolf, but after they named him Knack the Weasel, they decided that he was half weasel. Like... Hmm... Anyway, and also Metal Sonic. Now, and once again, as far as how they play, well, they play like Mario Kart Lite. You know, and specifically the Super Mario Kart from the Super NES. You know, Mm. like, um, you know, right down to instead of coins, Sonic has rings. Um... And so on and so forth. And um, the stages are based, you know, based off of Sonic levels. You know, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for Drift 1 and uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for uh, Drift 2. Oh, man. Oh, man. Racing my car through the chemical plant. That sounds like a good idea. uh, I mean... What could possibly go wrong? You know, like I said, you know, these were okay for primitive portable racers, but... You know, even t- trying to play them uh, you know, on the like the uh, what it was the Sonic Mega Collection or um, um, it depends. It was on Mega Collection, I believe. It was or, also on Adventure DX. Yeah, or, hmm. or, or no, um, it was on uh, like or the Sonic Gems Collection. Yeah, that's the third place it was available on. I don't remember it being released anywhere else though, other than maybe the Wii shop. Out kind of can't check that now. Right. I mean, and, uh, you know, I have both the Mega Collection and the Gems Collection. Um, and, yeah, it, it's like, 
it's worth noting that these games exist, but they, you know, it's like that's about all they do. I mean, when you have a game about a guy whose whole thing is that he goes fast, it makes sense to have there be a racing game about it. Right. And I it guess makes it kind of makes sense putting him in a car. Well, if, well, he, well, well, if he wasn't in the car, no one else would have a chance. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, it's like, plus, you know, we'll address this more. And there are other reasons for Sonic to be in a car. You know, like with Transform, there was a good reason. You know, <laughs> Sonic can't fly. Yeah, uh, sometimes. I'm like, if he's not supersonic, he can't fly. Yeah. And, you know, he specifically has to rely on Tails in the Tornado. Yeah. So, you know, he can run over water. That's true. But, but you know, it's monster, like... And he doesn't do so well when wet. Yeah. Anyway, you know, moving onward, after the Drift series, is the very infamous Sonic R. You know, it's like... Can you feel the sunshine, Adam? Does it brighten up your day? I'm like, yes, yes. Let, let's get all the meme jokes out of the way. You know, if you know... Somebody had to make that joke. Well, obviously. It's like... The reason you know what Sonic R is is because of the, its very goofy, inappropriate soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it goes inappropriate. Yeah. You know, look... look some people love this soundtrack, some people hate it, but you can't tell me that this thing that fit what they were going for here. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the whole premise of comedic gold here. Mm-hmm. You know. But, you know, outside of the um, unique music, uh, Sonic R honestly uh, isn't that far removed from Sonic Drift. In terms of content, and as a racing game, it's much worse. Yeah. You know. mm-hmm. The the catch up on that thing is oh god. <laughs> yeah. By the way, um, even though I did own a Saturn, I did not own Sonic R because I had the PC version of R. Yeah. Well, it's like Sonic R is on the Sonic Gems collection. As well. Yeah. You know, so the Sonic Gems collection was, you know, all the obscure weird stuff and Sonic CD. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, it had Sonic the Fighters on it. Yeah, we'll probably get into that someday. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I Adam, like, they have to do something for all the fans of looks at Notepad, Bark the Polar Bear. <laughs> 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 like, uh, but yeah, Sonic R is a pretty terrible racing game. Um, It's got... You know, its controls are legendarily shit. Okay? Oh, yeah. You know, know, just watching footage, you'll get an idea of how awkward and gangly this this racing game is. I I wish it worked on modern versions of Windows, because if I was at my computer, I would show you. (laughs) No doubt, no doubt. I'm like... Um, but, you know, thankfully you don't have to go through that hell, you know. <laughs> I'm like, also, Sonic R, for whatever reason, has some really bizarre level design choices. That is to say, um, so in order to unlock courses and characters, you've got to find, um, you got to find shit on the uh, racing track. You know, <laughs> it's like... Um, you know, this was seen to much better effect in games like Diddy Kong Racing and um, San Francisco Rush. Um, you know, Sonic R required you to not only find, like, the Chaos Emeralds and whatnot, but you had to win, if I'm remembering correctly. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if you lost, you had to do the race all over again. Yes. I suppose, you know, some people will complain that this um, game only has, like, five tracks or whatnot. I say that's a blessing because... I think it's six. Yeah, six. There we go. Like, it's got a, like, even for a, you know, like a racing game on the Sega Saturn, it's got a low number of tracks. Yeah. Like, Like, six was not considered to be acceptable even back when this thing was new. Yeah, the Mario Kart at the time had 
what, ten? More than that. Mm-hmm. Like, like six tracks, that's, uh, you know, that's a cup. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that's like a cup and a half there for Mario Kart. Like, and, you know, just overall, this game is one of the, one of the shittier Sonic efforts, which is saying something. Yeah, they, this is a special kind of bad. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, that's kind of why it's enduring. You know, that, that's why it's a memetic game. It, you know, it's mostly the soundtrack, but it's also because it's god-awful. And I'm I'm not afraid to say that, because seriously, I'm sure this game has a defender there somewhere, because everything mm-hmm. has to have it. But, you know, it's not good. It's shit. Also, I hope the person who thought of... Um... Tails doll and Robo Knuckles were launched into the sun. Mm. <sighs> like, uh, anyway, um, so moving on from that, the racing series of the PlayStation Two era, um, you might have forgot existed. Like, I I might have. <laughs> yes, I'm like, sure I did. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know it wasn't a straight line from R to the modern stuff. Oh no, no, it's the Rider series, you know, aka Sonic um, Airboarding. Yep. Um, admittedly, I can't speak too much to the Rider series because I never played. It. I did. Uh, don't just don't bother with Riders One. Oh my god. <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna have to take your word for that since you know I not only did I never play those. Um, they never interested me, though. Um, yeah. they're, very, they're very heavily story focused, from what I remember seeing from Let's Plays. Uh, surprisingly, so for maybe a not a kart racer, but you know, a cousin to the kart racer. Yeah. You know, though I though special mention goes to Sonic Free Riders. Um, if you don't remember this hellscape. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> the war of flashbacks is coming back, damn it, Adam. I'm like, so yeah, Sonic Free Riders. This was the uh, Riders game for the fucking Microsoft Connect. You know, I'm like, there's another person needs to be shot into the sun. <laughs> oh, I'm like, uh, you know, we know people who've worked on the Connect, so you know, bless their souls. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, but yeah, Free Rider you you probably remember remember from YouTube fodder. You know, it's one of the games to showcase how bad the Kinect controls were, and also uh, this really has to be addressed. You know, um, how do I say this? Oh right, fuck the um, people who made gay panic jokes about Sonic Free Riders because that was totally a fucking thing. It you know, was. It, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because Sonic Fri- uh, Sonic Free Riders two player mode, you had to hold hands and like oh, move yeah. back and forth. Okay, it's that's dumb, but that's not why that's dumb. Right. I'm saying there were fucking people who, you know, oh hey, look, two guys doing this. You know. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, it's like so. Fuck them. Like I know it's been a long time, but you know, fuck you. You did that shit. I saw it. Mm-hmm. You no, know, no, that wasn't fucking funny. You know, there was a lot about Connect Free Riders that was hilariously awful. That was not one of them. Okay, mm-hmm. moving on. Uh, you know, and that's where we get the Sonic, uh, you know, racing series. You know, um, uh, there was uh, the Sonic and All Stars Racing, which was not the first All Stars game, by the way. That was Sega All Stars Tennis. But we're not yep. talking, you know. We're not talking about the tennis game, so um, I put a good de- deal of time into um, All Stars Racing on the PC. You know, uh, one of the better kart racers I've ever played. Um, you know, not too much notable uh, notable about it um, outside of you know the Sega fan service on display. You know, especially, especially for the time frame, you know, 
This game came out in 2010, I want to say. 2010, yeah. You know, it, it, it's like, you know, the the nostalgia wallowing wasn't what it is today. You know, um, granted, we, we saw the, you know, we, once again, we saw this kind of deep nostalgia diving with the tennis game, but it was still neat to see um, it done with the kart racing. You know, because you now I get why it's called Sonic, and you know, it, you know, it's called Sonic and uh, all Sega All Stars Racing. Not just because Sonic's always the headliner; it's because his, you know, his character set takes up maybe not half the roster. A little less than half. It's like yeah, six out of fourteen or something. Something like that. It's a good chunk of it. You know, it's like and. It's, it's the you know it's the standard character set for the most part. You know, probably the biggest um, outlier there is um, Big the Cat, and even he's not that much of a stranger. Mm-hmm. You know, Big is Big is a comfortable, familiar joke option. Yeah, it's not like busting out Espio the Chameleon or you know Mighty the the Armadillo. You know, Espio's like, not that obscure. Uh, I guess Mighty hasn't really been in anything aside from well, uh, Knuckles Chaotix and then Sonic yeah. Mania Plus, but... Sega Sonic, the arcade game. That's great. Yeah. Like, but yeah, the Chaotix aren't that... None of the Chaotix are super obscure. M- Mighty is probably the most obscure of them. You get what, I, you get what I'm saying. It's like, mm-hmm. there's no... You know, um... For the All-Stars Racing game, they didn't bust out anyone too obscure in terms of Sonic characters. Other characters, oh god, yeah. They went to some depths here, let me tell you. I mean, they dug up, like, the fucking Bonanza Brothers. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, you know... Yeah, the, I was looking at the list, and there were several characters from games that not only do I recognize not recognize the character, I didn't recognize the game at all. Right. I'm not... You know, like for example, the uh, you know another example is um, the House of the Dead characters are a couple of zombies from a Japanese-only spin-off, if I'm remembering correctly. Also, you know, like characters from games that you know, like oh, yeah. that you really wouldn't expect to see in a kart racer, like the the mice from Choo Choo Rockets. Mm-hmm. I'm like, or um, Opa Opa. Now, mind you, Opa Opa is a kart. Like, you know, you race as him because he is the ship from Fantasy Zone. Um, sure, why not? Works for me. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, but it's not just characters. You race in various, uh, you know, Sega franchises. Granted, some of them are identified oddly instead of like House of the Dead. It's called Kyrian's Mansion. Probably wanting to avoid the, the dead connotation there. Like, um, unfortunately, the representation of Sonic is not very good because um, the game they drew from was Sonic Heroes. I'm like, you know, know, it's like, fuck Sonic Heroes. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Sonic Heroes had good things and bad things. I'm like, I'm struggling to think of good things. Like, hmm. anyway, um... But yeah, uh, Sonic All Stars Racing was a good, if fairly conventional, kart racing game. But you know where things got kicked up to the next level, so to speak, was with Transform. Admittedly, I haven't played Transform yet. It's been on my Steam list for literally years, but it's just something I never got to at at current times. But st- you know, Transform is considered to be you know, not just like the pinnacle. It's considered to be one of the best kart racers ever made, which is some pretty rarefied company, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. There. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, and the, yeah, that, it's not exactly a tiny genre or anything. Yeah, and you know, the the big thing that Transform is bringing to the table is, um, it's taking the gimmick from one of the gimmicks from Diddy Kong Racing and combining. Um, you know, it's like 
Because if you remember Diddy Kong Racing, you could drive in a cart, you could drive in a hovercraft, and you could drive in a plane. Mm-hmm. Now, instead of a hovercraft, you've got an actual boat, but the idea is, you know, you drive a vehicle that can transform into all three. And, um, indeed, each lap is a different racing style. You know, first lap, it's on land, next is on air and uh, sea. Not necessarily in that order. Like, and, you know, the roster has been expanded to 20, uh, baseline, because there were a whole host of characters added um, to this game as DLC. Or bonus characters. Like, but, um, once again, you got a mix of the familiar and the obscure. Like, uh, I mean, they got tracks here based off of fucking Burning Rangers. <laughs> you know? <laughs> again, that, that, I believe that that's the title of a video game, but I never heard of it. I own, I actually still have Burning Rangers. Lost by Saturn ages ago, but I still have Burning Rangers. Like, Weird. But, uh, you know, it's like, um, you know, some of the characters brought in, uh, like, um, Guileless Thunderhead, the fucking dwarf from Golden Axe, or um, v, uh, Vice from Skies of Arcadia. I'm like, they also dug Knights out of his grave for this one. Well, Knights yeah, was they're... actually in All Stars Racing. He was the flag man, he's the guy who started you off. Here, he's an actual playable character. Um, if I'm recalling correctly, his role as Flagman was taken over by Rystar. Yep. I'm like, Sega has a rich IP history, if nothing else. Uh, yeah. It's just a shame. Um, though, that aside, um, I suppose we should talk about some of the guest characters and why. Uh, why is uh, Anakin God. Has- <laughs> because she was yeah, I, really trying hard to be, in addition to a girl racer, a girl gamer. I guess. Uh, I'm like. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, and she drives the Donna car. Like, you know, she's not. You know, that's apparently her Hot Wheels toy. Yeah. Hmm. You know, um, Wreck It Ralph is here, which makes more sense. Yeah, he was all. Well, Sonic was in his movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know it's pre it's it's pre pre established that Sonic exists in Wreck-It Ralph's frame of reference. Yeah. And the DLC character for the consoles was Metal Sonic. Yeah, keep that in mind because uh, Metal Sonic was DLC in the first one. He came as an unlockable in the second in Transformers. Ah, there we go. There we go. Well, DLC for this one was... Let me find it. Well, here's the thing. DLC for this is special, because mm-hmm. a special mention needs to be mentioned to the, um, the Steam version, because um, this got a whole bunch of additional content and characters that you can't get anywhere else. I mean, there were bonus characters in, like, most of the releases. Um, the Xbox, All-Star, you know, both of them got Banjo and Kazooie. Um, and in the um, Transformed for the Xbox, you got to play as avatars. Um, you got to play as Miis in the Nintendo versions. Um, of course. PlayStation, you got Jack and shit. Yeah, this also to- ran like Jack and shit on the like, PS3, so to be understood, you know. For a yeah, second there, the I piece- thought you might say Jack and Daxter, but you didn't. As far as the as far as the PC goes, well, it starts with Valve's Team Fortress characters, and then they kept adding new weird things. It started with Team Fortress and then dissolved, evolved into madness. Well, it's like the next. Well, okay, the next character was General Winter from G- Companies the Company of Heroes Two, Willemus from Total War Rome Two, like yes. Uh, a ancient Roman character definitely makes sense in a game where you're racing cars. <laughs> I, I'm like, 
Um, That's definitely a thing that has been invented and that he definitely wouldn't think is just some kind of horrid witchcraft. Yeah. And um, we're doing... These are characters that were done as pre as free updates. As far as actual DLC goes, well, that gets into the strangest of the characters. Because the Yogg's cast showed up. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm like... You know, <laughs> well, it's like apparently it was a collaboration for charity, so um, kudos to them for that. But you know, and it was also to hype the final bit of DLC, which only the PC got. Uh, Ryo Hazuki. Now, Ryo was actually in the first All Stars Racing game, at, but here's the thing: his vehicle was a lot different. In okay. the first game, he drove a forklift. <laughs> because, of course, he did. Like, you know, once again, if you know Ryo Hazuki and Shenmu, you know the forklift. Mm -hmm. the, the transformed vehicle was something special. It is a um, writing arcade machine. And the gimmick here was the, the arcade machine would transform into different AM2 uh, arcade cabinets. Ones that are relatively, re relatively uh, ref um, relevant to the current form of the race, I believe. Yes, you know, like I believe it went super hang on for the land, um, afterburner for the um, air, and I want to say space harrier for the for the water, but I can't remember offhand. Now, uh, you know, point is. Um, only the PC version got this. <laughs> oh, it was originally Outrun for the land, but they had to change that because of the Ferrari license right. shenanigans. Yes, yeah, it, yeah. I, I, you know, um, shame, really, but, you know, mm -hmm. anyway, you know, I can tell you that um, there were a lot of console owners that, that were pissed about the PC version um, because of that specific DLC. The rest of that... Yeah, you know, nobody w was really craving for, you know, the Yogg's cast or whatever. But, the Yogg's you know, cast, Shogun from Total War, the football yeah, manager. Yeah, it's like, you know, stuff like that. Like, but, you know, they wanted Ryo Hazuki. Uh, they never got him. You know. I'm like... See, um, if you're looking to play this game now, PC is your best option. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yep. like, you know... Um, and most of the DLC is free now, I believe. Most of it, but I think you, you still have to pay for, like, the Yogg's cast and the um, Ryo Hazuki DLC. Uh, to Steam. Yeah. I'm like, well, he's looking up that, um, and that shifts us to the current version, which is Sonic Team Racing. Which, um, you know, since they wanted to do the team-up aspect... That's why they issued the All Stars framing, and you know, just went in with the Sonic franchise. So, you know, yeah, this is the it, would be, it would be tricky to if you include uh, three yeah. characters from each franchise or combine franchises in a weird way. Right. You know, mind you, we got some of that going on here in T. Uh, you know, in the the Sonic Team race. Like, I'm probably going to be saying this backwards and forwards. It's about 80% the same teams as uh, Sonic Heroes, which is what they were clearly inspired by. However, Eggman's team... I forget what team he was on in Sonic Heroes, if he was even... He wasn't on one, was he? No, he was. No, he was. No, he was. He, anyway, he was not. He's here, and he's picked up friggin' uh, what, Metal Sonic? Yes. And... Zavok from Sonic Lost World because people cared about that apparently. <laughs> uh, uh, Team Rose has been changed slightly because I guess Cream isn't old enough to drive, so they just replaced it with a bunch of Chow in a. Yeah, it's weird. It's like <laughs> Cream doesn't exist now after generations. I guess they just kind of left her in the void or something. My headcanon like is literally it. that she's not allowed because she's too young to drive. And instead of having a Team Chaotix proper, they kept Vector, 
but instead of having Espio and was it Charmy in Charmy, yep. instead of having Charmy, they gave him uh, Blaze and Silver because uh, Silver is a guy and Blaze is popular. <laughs> or at least I'd like to think she is because I like her. Uh, I don't but know they, the but silver. They don't, I just know had the porcupine. <laughs> but, they, but they don't have a third party member, so I guess they combine them with Vector. Uh, SDO might have worked better, but you can't. It's harder to make an excuse for for uh, Silver or Blaze to be a power member. Mm. Uh, Vector is the power member of that team. So, uh, silver is technical and Blaze is speed, I believe. Right. Anyway, um, so you know the reviews have been, um, you know, this is a this is an okay Sonic racing game. You know, like, no, it doesn't seem to be a beat. <clears throat> um, but you know, once again, I have not played, uh, you know, Team Sonic Racing yet. You know. I'll probably pick it up when it's on deep, deep sale. Since, you know, yeah, 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 you know, the reviews aren't really encouraging, to be honest. Like, I haven't heard anything about it being like really bad, but it's also not particularly great. I think that that's about where I've seen it. Same here. Like, <laughs> okay, anyway. yeah, they um updated um. The Sonic and Sega all, or the Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed. It's now a collection, and the only DLC that's separate to buy is the Yogg's Cast. Hmm. Well, that's good to know. Indeed. Like, anyway. Um. So yeah. Um. That'll about do it for the uh this topic, and indeed that'll about do it for this installment of Fragments of Silicon. Um. Yeah, we went a bit long this time, but, uh, you know, it's like we were off a week, so, you know, kind of had to get uh, things out of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that in mind, the week ahead, um, coming up on Friday, we do have a multiplayer game session with a game called Undercrude. Um, on Sunday, we'll be having our typical um, uh, the Sunday reviews. Um, up this week will be Sniper Elite V2 Remastered and Red Triggered. But also on Sunday will be the start of E3 press conferences. Like, and indeed, that will be the start of our E3 coverage as well. You know, as usual, our reviews will be in between conferences. Um, yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Jumps out of window. Yeah, because the Xbox conference is slated to be two hours. Oh boy, I bet they totally definitely have two two hours worth of stuff to talk about and won't be padding the shit out of it. Oh, actually, <laughs> the, the, the indications seem to be that they do. Because, you know, they're going to be talking about their next generation stuff. Uh, they're gonna talk, yes. They're going to be talking about their streaming stuff. They're going to be talking about a lot, apparently. Yeah, they've got stuff, apparently. So. You know, Whether how much of this is going to be actual new games is left to be seen. Um, you know, um, but yeah, it's like that's going to start the three days of conferences. Um, as far as who and what configurations are showing up, um, we're not exactly sure. Mainly because, um, not exactly sh like um, you know, like. There are some generalities I can say. For example, um, Twilight won't be with us during the day since he has to work, um, as well as um, Galix, um on Monday. But you know, apparently he was able to get Tuesday off. Um, I, you know, it's like you know, be sure to t uh, tune in to the after show. Kevin's probably going to give us what you know what things he can show up for. As far as Ogre. Um, he has not confirmed, any, you know, what his schedule looks like yet. Mm -hmm. I'll ask him in a few days. So, be sure to um, keep abreast of, you know, like social media or our Friday broadcast for updates. Now, because we're about to hit the br head into the breach. Yep, the busiest hellscape of our year. Yep. 
So, and, you know, also, um, we are aware that the, uh, that um, Google is going to be showing off Stadia stuff tomorrow. That's we don't not care. Part of, you know, that is not part of E3, so we are not streaming it. Well, it's like if it's important, we might discuss it during next week's show, but well, if it's not, it might just be an afterthought in the post-show. We're not E3-ing it, is the point. Yeah. yeah it's like, uh, yeah, well, it's more, I'm not starting E3 early just because Google wants to. So, anyway, with that in mind, until next time, I wish you good gaming.